this is Chemical Bonding. We're in a new chapter, and this is a 3.1 Lewis dot structures. We're going to get right to it. We got a bunch of rules for drawing Lewis dot structures, and you want to be able to do these rules every single time. And there's four simple rules. The first one is we're going to count up the total number of valence electrons. Okay, so just look at your valence electrons, count them up, get that number down because those are the only amount of electrons that you can use. Second thing we're going to do is we're going to put the lone atom in the center. That's the one that's all by itself. If you don't know which one's a lone atom, just put one of them in the center and then fill the outside atoms with octets, okay, with eight electrons. If it's hydrogen, you only fill it with a single bond and that is his octet. And then any leftover electrons, you count up how many you've used, any leftover electrons go in the central atom. Okay, and we have two options at this point. If the central atom has an octet right now, or it has more than an octet, guess what? You're done. You're good. You're good, yo. Just keep going, all right? If the central atom has less than an octet, what you're going to do is you're going to take pairs of electrons from the outside atoms, which are filled with octets, and you're going to make either a double or a triple bond until the central atom has an octet. Now guys, these rules, they, don't, they might not make sense right now, but I'm going to show you about four examples and it will hopefully make sense as it goes along. And what you want to do is practice these four rules, okay? So let's take a look at NF3, nitrogen trifluoride. Okay, nitrogen has five valence electrons and fluorine has seven valence electrons since it's in the halogens. And seven times three is 21 plus the five gives you 26. So I only have 26 valence electrons to use. Nitrogen's my lone atom, so I'm going to put him in the center. Fluorine's going to go on the outside, and I'm going to fill him with octets, okay, with octets. And what I mean by octets is the fluorine will have eight electrons around it, okay? So take a look. This the fluorine has two, four, six, and this single bond is eight electrons. So that single bond accounts for two electrons. There's an electron here, and there's an electron there that they're sharing, okay? And so that fluorine has a full octet. All the fluorines have full octets. And so I'm gonna take these circles off, and now I'm gonna count up how many electrons I've used. I've used eight electrons on that fluorine. I've used eight electrons on that fluorine. I've used eight electrons on that fluorine. And so eight times three is 24. How many do I have left? I have 26 total valence electrons at the beginning. I use 24, so I have two left. Where am I going to put them? I'm going to put them on the central atom. Okay, so nitrogen has two extra valence electrons on it. And now, what are we going to do? We're going to count how many the central atom has. Nitrogen has two right there. He's got two right there. He's got two right there. And he's got two right there. And so, that is eight. Nitrogen has an octet, and guess what? We're done, and this is my Lewis dot structure of nitrogen trifluoride, right there. Let's go on, let's uh, try another one. We, here we have CH4, we have methane, okay, carbon tetrafluoride. Carbon has four valence electrons, hydrogen has one, of course, so one times four is four. I bet you can do that on your fingers. You can count that up. That is eight total valence electrons. Carbon's the lone atom, he's gonna put it, be put in the center. Hydrogen's gonna go on the outside, okay? Now, this is actually hydrogen's octet. You don't need all those dots around hydrogen because hydrogen's octet is just two shared electrons. And of course, we have one electron and one electron there. Okay, and so hydrogen has his octet. Okay, take a look at, count up how many carbon has around him. He has two, four, six, eight. He's got eight electrons around him, which is an octet. And guess what? You're done. You're done. That's the, that's the Lewis dot structure of methane. Let's go to a little harder example. This is carbon dioxide, okay, what we breathe out. And carbon has four valence electrons, of course, and oxygen has six, but we have two of them. So six times two is 12. 12 plus four is we have 16 electrons to work with here. Okay, so let's take a look. Carbon's the lone atom, so he goes in the center. We're going to fill the outside with octets. Now, guys, I know you might know exactly what this looks like, but I'm going to do it according to my rules, okay? Oxygen gets the octet on the outside, and now oxygen's cool, isn't it? Okay, both oxygens are cool because both oxygens have have one, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Each oxygen has eight, so each oxygen has an octet around it. So count up how many we, we've used. We've used eight on the one oxygen, eight on the other oxygen. That's 16. We don't have any more electrons. We don't have any, any more electrons that we have extra. Okay. Now the oxygens are cool, right? They both have eight. But carbon, look how many he has. He has one, two, three, four. Okay. He does not have an octet. He only has four electrons. So what we're going to do is, if remember, if there's a a smaller amount of electrons. What we're going to do is we're going to take from the outside atom, okay? We're going to take from this oxygen right there, and we're going to move these two electrons right in there. So it's actually going to share more electrons. So this is going to be moved in, and you can see I'm going to erase this right here because this is not there anymore. I've moved these. Now what I want you to see is look at the oxygen. The oxygen still has two, four, six, eight around him. The oxygen hasn't changed its octet. But what did we do to the carbon? We've added some to the carbon. We've shared more. We didn't just add, add electrons. You can't add any more electrons. We only have 16 valence electrons. What we did, we moved. Now carbon still doesn't have an octet. Carbon only has six around him right now. So what are we going to do? We're going to take these two and we're going to move them right in here and so what's going to happen is the oxygen is going to share some more with the carbon and I'm going to eliminate these from the oxygen right here and now look both oxygen still have eight we didn't change anything on the oxygens but the carbon now has an octet and the carbon is absolutely cool so that's how we take from the outside atoms and we make double bonds okay let me take a look at one more example here here's a sulfur tetrafluoride sulfur well, sulfur has six valence electrons fluorine is in the halogen so he's got seven seven times four is 28 plus six is 34 so let's take a look at what happens we have sulfur going in the middle he's the lone atom we're going to put fluorines on the outside one two three four five six seven eight and same thing here okay and you're going to get pretty quick at putting a bunch of dots around okay and you can see I start to lose a little bit of patience after time now let's see how many we've used we have fluorines that are filled with octets so we have four fluorines all filled with octets 8 times 4 is 32 how many total valence electrons do we have 34 so how many do we have left we have two more where are we gonna put them right on the central atom so we slap these bad boys right on the central atom take a look how many does sulfur have? We've got to see if the central atom has an octet. Sulfur has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ooh, sulfur has more than an octet. Guess what? We're cool. Remember, if we have exactly an octet or more than an octet, we're cool. If we have less than an octet, what are we going to do? We're going to steal from the outside atom and make double or triple bonds. And that is Lewis dot structures. Let me give you one more. One more for the nitrogen dioxide. Nitrogen has five and, and oxygen has six, six times two. So we have 17. Ooh, we have an odd number of electrons. So let's find out what happens when we have an odd number of electrons. We have nitrogen in the middle. We're going to put oxygen on the outside. What are we going to do with oxygen? Fill them with an octet. Guys, do the exact same rules every single time. It works every single time. Now let's take a look. Oxygen's cool, remember. Nitrogen, let's see if we've used them all. Uh, oxygen has 8. Oxygen has 8. That's 16. Uh-oh. We have 17, which means we only have one leftover electron that we got to put on that nitrogen. So now, look at your nitrogen. How many does he have around him? He has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, 5. Well, how many do we want around the central atom? We want an octet. But we're never going to get an octet because we have, um, we have an odd number. But we can get pretty close to an octet, so we're going to move these electrons right there to make a double bond, okay? And now that sort of eliminates, well, it doesn't really eliminate, it just changes the outside. But take a look. Both oxygens have octets. The nitrogen on the middle has two, four, six, seven electrons. He has seven electrons on him. And guess what? That's as close as we can get to an octet, so we are done. So that is the Lewis dot structure of nitrogen dioxide, okay? A deadly gas, and it's a deadly gas because of that lone electron on nitrogen. But 
what happens here is you might say, Mr. Hayden, what couldn't I put the double bond on the other side? And yes, we could. And this has what we call a resonance structure, which means it can be a double bond on this side, okay, or a double bond on the other side, either a double bond on the right or the left side. And that means we have to show both structures. Anytime you have resonance or you have it could be more than one structure, you got to show both structures, which are called resonance structures. Okay? That's our Lewis dot structures. Um, let's just take a look at our bonds, chemical bonds. And um, to, you take a look. We have a single bond, a double bond, a triple bond, and you can see what happens here is the the single bond is much longer than the double or the triple. Triple bond is the shortest. Okay, so the single bond is the longest bond that we have, but you can see the triple bond is the strongest bond because, of course, there's three of them. Okay, and we have a funny thing called bond order. The bond order of a single bond is one. The bond order of a double bond is two. The bond order of a triple bond is three. Okay, and those things, three things that you want to know, which one is longer, which one is stronger, and which one has what bond order. We also have a single bond is what we call a sigma bond with this funky looking sigma thing. Okay, it's a sigma bond. Only one sigma bond. A double bond is a sigma and a pi, okay? A sigma and a pi. And a triple bond is a sigma and two pi's. It's kind of like a sigma sandwich with the pi being the bread, okay? And what this does is this is where they bond in the orbitals. The sigma is the s orbital, so it's bonding with the s orbitals. The pi is the p orbitals where we're bonding. And, uh, and this is basically where we're bonding for a single, a double, and a triple bond. Guys, I hope this helped. Um, hope this was awesome and come to class knowing how to do Lewis dot structures.